1 p.m. Assalamu alaikum. This is Radio Pakistan. The news read by Ali Ahmed. First, the headlines. Foreign Minister says India's unilateral and illegal step on occupied Kashmir to revoke special status has jeopardized regional peace and stability. In occupied Kashmir, people continue to face hardships on 87th consecutive day today due to military lockdown and ban on communications networks. Advisor on Finance says first quarter statistics of current financial year indicate that national economy is gradually stabilizing. United Nations has called for national dialogue to resolve the ongoing anti-government protests in Iraq. And now the news in detail. Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi has underlined the need for enhancing economic cooperation and people-to-people -people exchanges between Pakistan and Cuba to strengthen bilateral ties. Talking to Cuban Vice President Robert Morales Odiche in Islamabad today, he said there is an enormous potential for Pakistan and Cuba to enhance cooperation in health and agriculture sectors. Appreciating the Cuban advancement in the field of biotechnology, the foreign minister proposed collaboration in research and development for the production of life-saving vaccines. The foreign minister also briefed the Cuban delegation on India's unilateral and illegal actions of 5th of August in the Indian-occupied Jammu and Kashmir. While highlighting the ongoing sufferings of the innocent people, he encouraged Cuba to uh, raise its voice against the human rights violations in occupied Kashmir. Meanwhile, Pakistan and Cuba have also signed an agreement to partially withdraw visa conditions between the two countries. The agreement will be applicable to only people having official passport and diplomatic positions. Pakistan has issued a commemorative coin to mark the 550th anniversary of founder of Sikh religion, Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Prime Minister Imran Khan in his Facebook account has also shared the picture of the commemorative coin the Prime Minister is also to inaugurate the corridor on the 9th of the next month, which will facilitate the Sikh community to visit their most revered place in Pakistan. In occupied Kashmir, Indian troops in their fresh act of state terrorism have martyred another youth in Islamabad district. The troops martyred the youth in a fake encounter during a cordon and search operation in Bijbihara area of the district. Meanwhile, people in the Kashmir Valley and Muslim-majority areas of Jammu region continue to face hardships on 87th consecutive day today due to military clampdown and ban on communications network. Opposition leaders in India have also slammed New Delhi, saying by confining the delegation to security premises, the government was trying to conceal the real situation in the territory. The chairman of the Kashmir Council, Europe, Ali Reza Sayyid has said that by inviting a selected group of members of European lawmakers to occupied Kashmir, Indian authorities have tried to mislead the world. In a statement issued in Brussels, he said it is a trick to show to the world that all is well in the territory. Advisor on Finance Dr. Abdul Hafiz Sheikh says the statistics of the first quarter of the current financial year indicates that the country's economy is on the right track and it is gradually stabilizing. He gave these remarks during a meeting with Pakistan's permanent representative at the United Nations, Munir Akram, in Islamabad today. Minister for Economics Affairs Hamad Azhar says that the government is implementing a mechanism to wipe out money laundering and suspicious transactions. Talking to a private news channel, he said the interagency mechanism has already been established to check terror financing investigations, suspicious transactions, and non profit organizations. Britain is set to go to polls on the 12th of December after the members of Parliament backed Prime Minister Boris Johnson's call for an election following the months of Brexit deadlock. By a margin of 438 votes to 20, the House of Commons approved legislation paving the way for 1st December elections since 1923. The United Nations has called for holding national dialogue to resolve the ongoing anti-government protests in Iraq. In a statement, the United Nations Secretary General's Special Representative for Iraq, Janine Hannes Nashart, condemns the rising toll in the violent protests. 
Pakistan women beat Bangladesh by 28 runs in the third and last T20 at Lahore today, winning the series 3-0. And that is the end of the news. For more news and analysis, log on to our website, radio.gov.pk, and also watch our live bulletins on our facebook.com slash radiopakistan newsofficial.